<laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know many of you on the line tonight already know me, but I'm going to uh, you know, introduce myself and kind of start over from, from scratch. So I'm, for those of you that haven't met me, I'm Dr. Mark Lindholm. So I'm a chiropractor in Elkhart, um, Indiana. And this is going to be a real pain that I have to keep admitting. And I have over, I've almost 30 years of experience as a chiropractor. And so honestly, this meeting to, or this um, presentation tonight is something I've been wanting to do for weeks. It's a lot of the information that I am giving to my patients on a daily basis that I think is really important. And honestly, I think is not being presented nearly enough in mainstream media or in most sources. So some of the things I'm gonna talk about tonight with boosting your immunity, I think are super important and I think we're just not hearing enough about it. So I wanna start off just by talking a little bit about you know, what immunity is and kind of my take on immunity or my approach to immunity. Before I start with that, I said I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm a chiropractor, but a little disclaimer, um, if you're watching this live or watching it recorded, um, please don't construe this meeting as a doctor-patient relationship. Um, I'm not claiming to cure or treat any conditions or diseases. Anything that, uh, you know, I'm doing my best to give you accurate information, but uh, if you have any questions about anything that I'm presenting tonight, I would recommend you run it by your own personal physician. So just a little disclaimer there to protect myself. So, and honestly, I'm not going to be talking so much about the treatment of disease. I'm going to be talking about prevention, which I think is so much more important. So I want to start off just talking a little bit about some statistics that you might not all be aware of when it comes to the coronavirus. All right. So um, just recently, the British Medical Journal, um, I think it was the 3rd of April, published a, a paper where they were reporting that as much as 78% of people that are exposed to coronavirus or, or have coronavirus are completely asymptomatic. So in other words, almost 80% of people that get exposed to coronavirus, um, the British Medical Journal is reporting that they don't have any symptoms. They don't even know they're sick, um, but they fight off the disease, they build immunity. All right. So previous to this report, um, I had heard widely reported that 25 to as much as 50% of people were asymptomatic with coronavirus and built up immunity without even knowing it. Um, so this newest article is a much higher number. Um, we also know through the World Health Organization and CDC that about 15% of people that have um, coronavirus, it's a serious illness and about 5% is critical. So why are these numbers important? The reason they're important is that, I don't know about you, but I'd like to do everything I can to be the 80% and not the 5%. So in other words, what's the difference between people that get exposed to coronavirus, their body builds immunity, they fight it off, they are protected then, what's the difference between those people and the people that you know, are critically ill or even passing away from coronavirus? It's the same virus. So the difference is not the strength of the virus. The difference is solely the susceptibility of the host or the strength of the immune system of the host. Now, this to me seems like a pretty basic, a pretty simple thing. We know this, this is the basis of how our immune system works. You know, as human beings, we have survived for, you know, all of each, you know, all of the existence of human beings for you know millions, billions of years because um, we have this robust immune system. We didn't have drugs, we didn't have vaccines, we didn't have you know, the kinds of things that we have now in the last 100 years um, in previous plagues. But yet, although people definitely died from infectious disease, um, the, the human species was not wiped out. And that's because we have a robust immune system, okay? So I'm not I'm saying that this isn't a serious disease and people shouldn't take it seriously. Not at all what I'm saying. A good friend of mine that's a medical doctor um, just recently got over coronavirus. He was sick with it for 17 days. Um, what's interesting is he did some of the same things at home to get over the virus as I'm gonna uh, recommend to many of you today. So I'm getting a little feedback, so if you're not muted, please mute yourself. Um, so, but I think this is a really important question. Um, what is the difference between somebody that gets coronavirus, doesn't even know it, builds immunity, and somebody that becomes critically ill or dies. It really has to do with how strong our 
um, immune system is. So what are the things we can do to boost our immune system? Honestly, there's some very basic and natural things we can do to boost our immune system. I think part of the reason we're not hearing about this enough is that they're honestly not sexy approaches. And maybe that's not the right word, but that's the only word I could think of today. So, you know, as human beings, and myself included, I'll admit, like, I'm lazy. So, you know, people want the magic pill. They want to know what's the one thing I can do. Maybe there's a drug I can take. You know, maybe my savior is, you know, hydroxy or hydrochloroquine. And, you know, I don't have to worry about it. I can just keep doing whatever I want, you know, not being healthy, not taking care of my health. But, you know, I'm looking for this quick fix. And the same thing happens in the natural arena. People will ask me, like, so what's the one vitamin or the one supplement I can take that can, uh, you know, where I don't have to worry about this? It's not that simple, unfortunately. It takes some work. It takes a multifaceted approach. But they're all, almost all, really simple, easy things that you can do. So I want to just start off with, with a list of things that you should be aware of. So I think the number one thing is sleep. We know in study after study after study that just decreasing by an hour or two is enough to drastically suppress your immune system. So if you want to be well and you want to boost your immune system, you should be getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep a night, okay? And so sleep is just a huge thing. We fight sleep, especially in our modern age where, you know, we can stay up all night long with artificial lights and watching, you know, uh, Netflix or watching you know, Amazon Prime or whatever, or, or um, you know, my kids you know, being on Minecraft or being on their games or whatever. So, but the very basic thing you can do is to get enough sleep. Human beings are really designed to sleep at night also. Um, you know, if you have a job that's third shift or you work at night um, and you might not have any choice over this, but it, just know that unfortunately, there's study after study that shows that your immune system isn't going to be as robust if you don't sleep at night. So you want to go to bed earlier at, at night. Ideally, you know, just a, a one to two, three hours after sundown um, and then get that sleep and then um, at least seven, eight hours a night. There's some um, evidence that humans also can really benefit from a little siesta of 90 minutes to a couple hours in mid-afternoon. But so sleep is super important. Another one a lot of people don't think about is um, just being well hydrated. So I have my water here right now with me. So hydration is super important. Your immune system functions better when you're well hydrated. A little tidbit about the coronavirus is that um, also being well hydrated and if you get exposed to coronavirus, washing that virus like into your stomach where the stomach acid could um, kill that virus can be beneficial. I'm going to talk about later on about heat and what we know with heat when it comes to viruses. We know that um, that about I think I believe it's 56 degrees centigrade. The World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control says that that temperature, which is about 100, and, I think it's 132 degrees um, Fahrenheit, kills the coronavirus. So, so heat is good. So drinking not only cold water, but drinking like hot tea. So I'm kind of a science geek, but I actually put a, a thermometer in my tap water. My tap water, when it's on hot and I let it run, comes out at about 133 degrees. So to give you an idea, you know, if you boil water, that's 212. So you don't have to drink boiling water. Don't do that. I want you to burn yourself. But 130 some degrees is, is a temperature that's going to be hot but still very drinkable without causing a problem. So um, staying well hydrated and especially drinking warm liquid um, can be a good idea. Again, I'm not guaranteeing you to uh, kill coronavirus. Don't go crazy and expose yourself on purpose thinking you're gonna protect yourself with just hot liquids. But we know through the CDC that heat can kill um, coronavirus, so why not drink hot tea? And an ideal thing would be to drink herbal teas that have other benefit in them. So like maybe an echinacea tea or something like that that's going to give you some benefit. Or with all the stress that people are under, um, you know, consuming a tea like a sleepy time tea that's going to help you to sleep at night. Again, because sleep is really important for your uh, immune system. Okay, so so sleep, staying well hydrated. Another basic one is getting out in the sunshine. And this ties into the first nutrient I want to talk about that's really important, and that's vitamin D. All right, so where we live, especially in northern Indiana, it is almost epidemic that people are deficient in vitamin D. 
because the best way to make vitamin D is from exposure to the sun. But we, where we live here, the sun is not intense enough the vast majority of the year. As a matter of fact, you can get a little vitamin D on sunny days this time of year, but not very much. It's really June, July, and August where we can get enough vitamin D. So I would urge you, if you haven't had a blood test where they've actually tested your vitamin D levels, you should do that. You should see your medical doctor or go to um, like LabCorp or, or any lab test now um, kind of a facility and have your vitamin D levels checked because if your vitamin D levels are low, it can really weaken your immune system. Vitamin D is extremely important. And, if, and actually, that's the first thing I would recommend. If a patient comes to me and says like, doc, you know, what's the order of importance as far as taking nutrients or supplements? What should I do? I would tell them um, you should be taking vitamin D every day and you really should have your levels checked. So another thing you should know is that they consider 30, I think it's nanograms per milliliter um, to 100 to be the normal range, but that's a really big range. They used to think 30 to 60 was normal, but now they um, believe that between 60 and 100 is actually more optimal. So if you have your, your levels tested and they come back at in the low 30s, I would still add a vitamin D supplement, okay? So more is not better though. That's why it's good to test your levels because vitamin D, it is possible to take toxic amounts, to take too much. Honestly, you would have to really try hard to do that. You have to take high uh, mega amounts for months. Um, so I wouldn't be overly concerned about that, but just know, you know, if a little's good, more is not necessarily better. So most people, um, should be taking at least a thousand IU of vitamin D. It's important that it's D3. I don't know if you can read the label of what I'm holding up here, but it's important it's D3. D2 is a synthetic version. D3 is the natural version. Um, and it's really important that, like I said, you do at least a thousand IU a day. Although I have many patients that need five or 6,000 IU a day just to maintain a healthy level. So it depends on the person. That's why I mentioned having your levels checked. So getting out in the sun, though, I started this conversation that you can get a little bit of vitamin D, but also UV light, a lot like heat, kills viruses, all right? So I'm not aware if it's actually been tested with coronavirus, but it's a well-known fact that it kills other viruses. So getting out in the sunshine, um, I, I do know that I read that um, hospitals were using not UV sunlight, but a UV light, artificial light, to clean masks um, that were being reused in hospital settings. So it's well documented that UV can um, kill viruses. Plus, honestly, just getting out in the fresh air, getting out in the sunshine is good for you, good for your immune system and good for you mentally, all right? So that also brings up a connected topic and that is getting some moderate, light to moderate exercise is also boosting for your immune system, okay? It gets your respiration going, it's good for your whole body, but it's especially good for your immune system. The reason I say light to moderate exercise is you can continue whatever level of exercise you have been doing or do walking, do bicycling. If you're not exercising, you can definitely start off that way. But this is probably not the time when you wanna be training for a marathon because we know that intense exercise, very intense exercise, can kind of weaken your immune system. So people, for example, that run marathons are often at risk for getting sick um, in the days um, or weeks following a, a major competition or a series of competitions. So you wanna exercise, but don't overdo it. All right, so that's super important. Um, it's also important to look at other nutrients. So vitamin C would be my top um, nutrient that you should be adding um, for boosting your immune system. Vitamin C, and actually the one-two punch is vitamin C and zinc, all right? So we have a number of different versions of vitamin C uh, at my clinic that we carry. One of them interesting is called, interestingly is called C-flav, where it's a vitamin C that has flavonoids in it. And the flavonoids have been shown to potentiate the ability of your body to absorb zinc, um, which zinc, especially with, this, with the coronavirus, seems, seems to be um, from reports that I'm hearing to be very effective. The friend of mine that I mentioned that's a medical doctor, he actually works in an ER um, in Chicago, mentioned that he was sick for 17 days with coronavirus and I asked him what he did um, to treat himself and he said he used vitamin C and uh, Zycam, which is a form of zinc, um, was the treatment that he, that he used, he didn't use any drugs. So really, really important. The, those of you that are patients of mine, or if you're not patients of mine, if you, if you, if you um, are on Facebook, um, look for and like 
Natural Health Family Chiropractic on Facebook because I posted some articles specifically about vitamin C and zinc that look at coronavirus. One of them is actually a clinical trial that's being done at Wuhan University. Um, it actually isn't completed yet. I think it's not supposed to be completed until June, but their preliminary findings are showing that what they call high dose vitamin C, which was 1200 milligrams, so 1200 milligrams was, um, uh, was effective in treating people um, that are actually hospitalized with more um, uh, serious uh, coronavirus symptoms or critical symptoms. They were doing it intravenously, um, but people can, can definitely tolerate 1200 milligrams of vitamin C orally without any problems. So when you put it in intravenously, it does get in your system faster. Um, I also reported a, a report on my clinic Facebook page that there were three hospitals that reported in, in, New York, in the New York City area that were following the same protocol of vitamin C um, that came out of Wuhan and they were having um, really good results with this also, okay? So vitamin C and zinc are really important. I'm a big fan of a product we carry through Metagenics called Immucor. Um, Immucor is a combination of vitamin C and zinc and it has some other botanicals in it like some mushroom extracts in it that are designed to boost immune function. You can take this proactively. Um, Orthomolecular makes a product called Virusid, which is another product um, that's really um, effective at um, you actually taking it very intensively if you first feel a cold coming on or feel something coming on, which I should mention with vitamin C and zinc, it wasn't surprising to me at all that these studies are starting to show that it was effective for coronavirus because there's, it's well documented that vitamin C and zinc can shorten the duration of many other viral infections. So a cold infection by like half the duration. So, um, so vitamin C and zinc did not surprise me at all. Um, I think that's most of the supplements that I wanted to go through. Other than I wanted to talk, I'm hearing a lot of questions about, because a lot of patients know, or a lot of people know that I wrote a book on the endocannabinoid system called A Doctor's Perspective on CBD. So I've had a lot of questions about CBD. I wanna talk a little bit about CBD in the context of immunity. So I actually have a whole chapter in my book on um, immunity and, and CBD. So it's called A Doctor's Perspective on CBD. I should have grabbed a copy. Um, just got my book. It's on Amazon. You can check it out um, on Amazon and order it if you'd like. But again, I'm not claiming that CBD treats or cures coronavirus, but in my book, I go through that there's research that shows that um, CBD is antiviral and antibacterial, that it actually um, uh, similar, similar to the way antibiotics or antiviral medicines actually um, help that CBD has these antiviral, antibacterial properties. But what the um, research also shows that we know for sure is that our immune system is balanced by these, by these cannabinoids. And so if you're new to this topic, this requires maybe a little more, bit more explanation than some of the other supplements because it's, it's really something that was just discovered about 30 years ago. So we've known about vitamin C for a long, long time, um, but the reason that CBD works is because we have in our body an endocannabinoid system. So we have an endogenous cannabinoid system where we produce our own cannabinoids that was discovered by Raphael Machulam, an Israeli researcher and his team. And they discovered that we have receptors, CB1 and CB2 receptors throughout our whole body. You can think of it like a hormonal system, but our, the CB2 receptors are especially rich in our immune system. As a matter of fact, all of our circulating white blood cells in our bloodstream actually have these CB2 receptors. The thing that's even more amazing about the way um, stimulating these receptors works is that, um, uh, is that our body has an ability to cause balance by stimulating these receptors. And uh, they, as a matter of fact, many researchers refer to the endocannabinoid system as the, you know, the, the engine of homeostasis or the engine of balance. Why is this important? Because what it can mean is that if somebody has an under-functioning immune system, it can improve their immune function. If somebody has an autoimmune problem or has an over-functioning immune system, or they get exposed to even an illness where their body reacts too robustly, sometimes the immune system overreacts, and that can cause um, some of the harmful effects of a disease um, that 
the way that these receptors work is they tend to balance both of those. It'll drive down an overactive immune system, all right? So the problem with the endogenous cannabinoids, 2-AG and anandamide that we produce, is almost all of us are deficient in these endogenous cannabinoids. So hemp or CB, hemp drives CBD is a phytocannabinoid. Uh, most researchers believe that we are designed to take in um, hemp or phytocannabinoids on a regular basis to upregulate this endogenous cannabinoid system and bring our body to balance or promote health. So there's so many other things that it benefits, honestly, um, aches and pains, especially anxiety and stretch, stress, um, helps people to sleep better, which is huge right now. A lot of people are struggling with sleep. Um, the particular, the issue with, one of the issues with CBD though, is that there's a lot of junk on the market. So I spent literally about a year researching the topic for my book and researching the available companies out there and products. And the best product on the market, in my opinion, is the Zelise UltraCell product. Um, that's why it's the only CBD product I carry at my clinic. And really, just as of last week, I was looking at other companies. I'm constantly looking at companies um, because if I found a company that was better, you know, I, I would start carrying it. But I can honestly tell you that I'm yet to find another product that compares to the quality um, and absorbability that we have with the with the UltraCell product. So it comes in a um, full spectrum CBD rich and also a full spectrum uh, CBG rich product. And, and, and you can use these, um, a lot of my patients, I'll have them do the CBD in the morning and the CBG uh, in the evening. And we don't have time to get into all of the specifics of that, but you can definitely follow up with me later or if somebody invited you to this Zoom meeting, um, that also is a Zelis ambassador or distributor, follow up with them and they can, can definitely talk to you about that. We also have a product that I'd like, we have a number of other amazing products, but the only other one I want to talk about tonight, just mention, is we have a product called Ultra Dream. And I mention this because, like I said, a lot of people are being, are under enormous stress right now with everything that's going on with the coronavirus. A lot of people in our area, honestly, I, I would venture to say, are under more economic stress than they are maybe health stress at this point. You know, we're all worried about the health and safety of, of ourselves and our friends and loved ones, but a lot of people are being really hit hard financially. And so a lot of people are struggling with sleep. So the dream product is, is amazing. Um, a lot of people don't need the dream product. The, the ultra cell CBD itself tends to benefit sleep, but if you're really struggling with sleep, the dream product again is, is wonderful. So um, one of the men that's, or one of the pre people that's on the call tonight, um, Jim Hartung, I'd like to uh, introduce and have him spend just a minute talking about his personal experience, specifically with the UltraCell products. He was sharing with me the other day how it's helped, um, helped him. Why don't you go ahead and share with us, Jim? Thanks, thanks Dr. Lindholm, I really appreciate it. Um, one of the things, I didn't want to take a bunch of your time and, and bore you with my, all these details, but um, you know, the history for me is I was in a car accident when I was 21. Uh, it was uh, a pretty, pretty bad accident and I damaged my already pretty compromised back from playing high school football and I have some scoliosis. Um, after, the back, after the accident, I was to a point where I couldn't even barely even walk. And luckily another person on the, on the line is my, my really good friend, Stu Broderick. And his dad is a chiropractor. Actually, he's got three members of his family that's uh, chiropractors. Well, he was able to help me out um, and get through that whole entire piece. Um, I later joined the, the Army uh, in 1991, and four years of rucksacks and combat boots on an already compromised back, uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's just not good. Um, and... I've had, I had a lot of issues with my back over the years, Vis lots of visits to chiropractors and visiting chiropractors all the time, just trying to alleviate some of that pain. Um, I've also struggled with anxiety. Um, after my, uh, um, I had a son in 2006 that was in a pretty bad ATV accident and he, everything was fine with him, but uh, what resulted was me having panic attacks. I didn't have any idea what they were and why they, why I even had them. But uh, after that trauma is, but how kind of, kind of induced it. Um, I mean, I'm never too far away. I was always, always had to, I was prescribed Xanax and that was the only thing, even though it's not the best drug in the world, that was the only thing I could use that actually helped the panic attacks to stay away um, and get that anxiety. 
um, worrying, stressing all over those kind of things would just, uh, I would just fixate on many, many different things, um, the stressors of life and all those things. And that's how uh, this pandemic uh, that we were doing with now, I would just be, ugh, it would just, I would be a mess because I would want to know everything there is to know about it. And I would be up all night long just trying to figure this thing out because of that anxiety and that worry factor. Um, so many different things um, I've also had problems with, uh, blood lipids. Um, after the military and after my back, you know, it's hard to exercise very much and um, had struggled with my, my blood lipids being way out of whack just due to the fact that my family's got heart disease and, and diabetes and all those things that are associated with that with uh, being overweight and everything. So those things were, were pretty big to me. Um, so my friend, Stu, he introduced me to Dr. Lindholm and we started talking about that UltraCell product. And back in December, my wife and I started taking that UltraCell product. And um, ironically, my wife was, was, she started taking it and she was sick with the, you know, some kind of cold or something like that. Normally she would be seven to 10 days and she would be sick and, and then it'd finally go away or she'd go to the doctor or something like that. About one or two days and she was not sick anymore. I thought that's kind of interesting. So had nothing, to, didn't know if it had anything to do with that or not. Um, but I started noticing that I wasn't as anxious. And the, the other thing I noticed was I was sleeping better at night and so was she. We were both uh, having good night's sleep and not waking up groggy or anything like that in the morning. We were taking the CBD in the morning, the CBG at night, still taking that today. Um, I started noticing I wasn't anxious, didn't have any problems with that. Interesting part was, is that um, while we were starting this, probably about January, February, we have a two, two and a half year old uh, black Labrador. And um, 3.30 in the morning when these always happen, the battery started going out of the smoke detector. And because I'm wondering, is this ultra cell product really working or is it psychosomatic? What's going on? Well, about 3.30 in the morning, the fire alarm goes out. And our fire alarm, when, it, when it, the battery goes dead, it starts beeping really loud and says, fire, fire, fire. Well, she went nuts. She was berserk. She was trying to get out of the house. She just couldn't get out of the house fast enough. And while here I am on a chair trying to get up to the change the battery and everything on this on this uh, smoke detector, my wife lets her out and she runs away. She's gone. So we have to go then find her. We finally find her cowering back behind the house and we get her in the house and she comes and runs right into her kennel. She's never in her kennel. And she's just sitting there just shaking like a leaf. And I said to my wife, I said, well, maybe I could put, try the CBD oil. Maybe that would help. And I put three drops on her paw. She licked it off. And five minutes later, she was totally calmed down, totally content, comes out of her cage. Everything was fine. So that's when I realized there's something to this more than, more than just what I realized uh, was going on with it. Um, fast forward to just before this pandemic went out, it was actually happening then. People were gearing up for it. And uh, I had my blood work done. And knowing that my blood work was going to be bad, my triglycerides were going to be bad because of my family history and everything, um, I get that I didn't, my doctor um, wouldn't prescribe me any more Xanax until I went and got my blood work done just to make sure because he hadn't seen me in about a year. And so I did the blood work. He calls me up and he says, everything's fine. Your triglycerides are fine. Your cholesterol is fine. Everything's fine. Now, I work in food service and sell to restaurants and that. And since then, I've, I started doing that job in September. I've gained probably 20 pounds. So there's no way that my, that my blood lipids should be fine. They're just, they're, I've always struggled with that. Um, but they have been. So uh, I, I just wanted to take a, take a time to, to talk about this and just say, this is what it's done for me. I can't tell you what it would do for anybody else. All I can do is say is, what it's done for me and I don't want to be without it. Um, and now it's kind of interesting that um, in these times, we I've had a friend of mine that was in a car accident this last summer and he had back surgery and the whole nine yards and um, older gentleman. And um, 
he had told me that he had gotten a steroid shot in his back and the doctor said that he could not take another steroid shot for another four months. So he's offering him all these different suggestions. And one of the things that he suggested was maybe you should try CBD oil. Now this is an orthopedic surgeon. This is big pharma. This is Dr. Lindholm can attest to that, that they're not usually too interested in, in this kind of holistic type of, uh, of treatment. And uh, it's just an issue. So he and I have been talking, he's getting ready to take the product and we'll see what happens with them. Awesome. But, but I just wanted, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, how this has affected me and uh, what it's doing, what it's doing for me. I just wanted to share that with you, Dr. Lindholm and everybody else. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. You know, I can stand up here and, you know, talk about the benefits, but to have somebody actually share how it's helped them. I think you also shared with me, correct me if I'm wrong, but you mentioned that your wife got over an illness much quicker than she normally would. But didn't you say that most winters you're all so sick a number of times and you didn't have that issue this year? Yeah, absolutely. Normally, normally through a winter season, we're going to be sick at least two times. You know, both of us will be sick. She's, uh, she's a bank manager, so she's dealing with lots of people and, and I deal with lots of people in my job. So we're going to get sick about two times a year. And I'm still waiting. I haven't gotten sick yet. I'm still waiting to get sick. So, um, and uh, she hadn't been sick since when she originally started taking this with me back in December, like I said, she would have been, you know, it totally, uh, she was over her illness in a couple of days, which was Perfect. very interesting. It never happens that way. You know how the older we get, we know exactly how long we're going to be, we're going to be sick, you know, cause they're always about the same, you know, whatever it's going to be. So, yeah. Great. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm going to kind of wrap up here because I'm getting a notice from Zoom that I only have a few minutes left here. So I'm too cheap to pay for the subscribe version. So I have the free version and it limits me to 40 minutes. So maybe I'll have to expand before my next call, but uh, they're going to limit me to 40 minutes here. So um, I realized when you were talking about eating at restaurants that I left out a whole big portion. I kind of, um, I'm just doing this, you know, uh, without notes on the top of my head. And I had a whole idea of what I wanted to talk about. And I jumped to supplements with and I skipped over a really important thing, and that is what we eat, okay? So this is kind of basic to me, but to a lot of people, it's not basic. You know, if you want to be healthy, you need to eat a whole food diet, uh, a diet that's um, rich in fruits and vegetables. Now is the time to get your, you know, eight servings of vegetables and fruits. You want to eat the rainbow, eat brightly colored fruits and vegetables. You get all of those nutrients from the fruits and vegetables, vitamins and minerals. You also though need a lot of healthy fats. So things like nuts and seeds and avocados and coconut, coconut oil. And you also want to make sure you have adequate protein. But you notice I didn't mention processed foods. I didn't mention, you know, lots of sweets and sugars. Sugars definitely suppress your immune system. So now is not the time when you want to be eating lots of sugary foods. Um, unfortunately, because my, what I, one of the things I love to eat is bread and pasta and rice and things like that, but you really, <clears throat> those things are actually, um, your body converts starches like that into sugar very quickly. So you really, ideally, if you want to boost your immune system, try to eat foods that are not sugary or starchy, try to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, uh, healthy fats, um, good, healthy protein, stay away from preservatives you know, fast food, preservative, preservative rich foods. Um, and I also mentioned, because I usually lump this together, being hydrated is super important. Uh, a lot of us eat um, when we really are thirsty. So if you're feeling hungry and you're, uh, you know, you're, um, you're quarantined at home and you're kind of bored, you know, make yourself some hot tea, drink some water instead of grabbing food. All right. So I think I have literally two minutes left. So I want to really wrap this up. I want to thank everybody for being with me today. Um, if you have more information, I mentioned my clinic Facebook page, but also most of the, a lot of the people on this uh, meeting uh, live here are also Zelis ambassadors or Zelis distributors. So if you want more information specifically about the CBD products, ultra product, you know, follow up with one of them. If, if, especially if, if 